Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to all of us in the building and to those of us joining online uh, this week. Uh, a good and warm welcome. I uh, just want to begin with some sad news. Some of you will know Bill and Sylvia Dean. Um, they've been members of this church for a number of years and uh, probably haven't been able to get for quite some time. But Bill, sadly, has died. Um, and I'll be going to see Sylvia after the service today. I tried to go and see her yesterday, but it, it wasn't possible. It was inconvenient yesterday. So I've arranged I'm going to go and see Sylvia um, uh, after the service. So just so you know, Bill Dean has died. Uh, when we come to our times of prayers of intercession, if you hold them and all others who we know who are bereaved in our hearts. We've come together to worship God. It's Trinity Sunday today. It's our day. So this is uh, uh, an important day uh, for us, although uh, Trinity Sunday is not about us. Um, it is about why we're here, which is God. I'm going to hand over to the band who are going to lead us in a time of worship. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Um, two songs this morning. We're going to sing in a moment, uh, What a Beautiful Name. But before we do that, we thought we'd start with something a little bit more celebratory, given the day. Um, this is a song, we've done it before, it's called, um, What a Faithful God Have I, um, Lord I Come Before Your Throne of Grace. And it's a celebration, if you listen to it on YouTube, it's all, the, all the versions are pretty much dirge-like, so we're going to play it a little bit more lively than that for you. Um, and I apologize for making you sing a top E flat. that one. Okay. Ready? One, two. And what a beautiful name, which starts you with a word at the beginning. Amen.
revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we greet you this day with praise and wonder. We greet you as the creator of the ends of the earth, sovereign over space and time, greater than we can ever imagine. Gracious and living Christ, we greet you this day with joy and thanksgiving. We greet you as our Lord, our friend and our saviour. Mysterious and mighty spirit, we greet you this day with awe and worship. We greet you as our guide and inspiration. Our source of strength and comfort, a living inner reality. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we greet you this day and we praise you that you are here to greet us and everyone today and every day, help here and everywhere. Help us to meet with you, to grow closer to you through this time of worship. Help us to glimpse your glory and to make it known through all we say and do, to the glory of your name. You are there watching over us, day after day. You are here by our sides until the end of the age. You are here within, now and always. 
for our rejection of your care, for our forgetfulness of your presence, for our stifling of your movement. Forgive us, Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. We ask now that you accept our worship for all its weakness, our discipleship for all its frailty, our service for all its limitations. Speak to us today so that we may experience your love, reflect more of your goodness, and live more with your power. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. And to you, the one God, be glory, praise, and honor, today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen. Yesterday morning, we, we had the coffee morning, and uh, I just wanted to say a little bit about the, uh, you know, the bird table, okay? Um, that uh, has been made by the men's shed, uh, and I'll come to that in a minute. But the c fundraising yesterday, the coffee morning raised £668, and thank you to all who came and all who took part with that. We made this bird table for Wendy. Uh, she's up in the back there. She's hiding this morning. Made it for Wendy. It was a, when I was the other one of the coffee mornings, I had some of the other men's shed stuff. We made some bird boxes and things like that. And we were people were booking those and we were ordering them and we were making them. And Wendy asked for a, a bird table. So I'm sure the men's shed can make you a bird table. Uh, so we have done. And it says on the, in the notice, made by the men's shed for Wendy. Uh, I have to say, it ought to be in brackets then say, actually made by David Cowans. Um, <laughs> because he did the majority of the work, I put a little bit of paint on it and screwed some, a few bits in and other bits as well. And he, he came up with this most wonderful technical drawing um, of it, a proper technical drawing. I was just so impressed with it and we made this. So we made that for Wendy. Uh, and I just wanted to say that if anybody else wants one, we've already had one more order. Uh, we don't want to get too many orders, we don't want to, you know, but we, do, we are willing to make them for people. There are things like this that we can do within the men's shed. But I didn't want to men mention the men's shed just as a publicity stunt for that. I also wanted to mention, say, if people wanted to come and join us in the men's shed, you're welcome to do so. And, and I always said right at the beginning, it is an inclusive men's shed. So the ladies, you are most welcome to join as well. I had an inquiry yesterday from a lady who saw the, the bird table and has asked whether or not she could come. And we said, absolutely, if she wants to come and be part of the men's shed, uh, she can. The men's shed is a concept, not a, not a thing to keep people out uh, and only take one group of people. Uh, so if people want to, ladies, if you want to come and you want to make things, you are most welcome to come and make things in the men's shed and join, join with us. Uh, we already have one inquiry in that way. But also to give a little bit of sort of forenotice in this, what we're also hoping to do and looking at, uh, we've still got some work in the planning for this to do, but we are looking to do, and bear with the language again, because uh, I'll explain, because I can't come up with another name as yet to decide what to call it. We were going to do a dads and lads men's shed. So we are thinking in that context of having one evening a couple of times a month where it will be parents and children but it, it, it sounds like something you have on a, on a morning with lots of toys for children, if you call it a parents and children one, uh, parents and child. So it, it will be open to women and girls and boys and men to come along to that when we get that going. So to the, to the young people here, if you want to come and be part of a, a men's shed, um, although it won't have that name, but to come and use our uh, tools and things that we have and learn how to make things, uh, you're welcome to do that. Um, you, you must uh, bring a parent along with you as well and, uh, and do that. And, you know, it's another way that we can expand this work. We have some really good equipment down there at South Gosforth now. And uh, it is reaching out to people. There are people from outside of the church who are making inquiries. Some are staying. Some are having a look and just maybe coming back a couple of times. Um, but we're slowly developing this work. And just to say that all people are welcome to come. And if you want to come and have a look at this after the service, feel free uh, and to see the handiwork. We're going to sing our next hymn.
I found my too many pieces of paper this morning. I, I printed it in rather a large font uh, this morning. When my wife looked at it, she said, how long is your service? And she saw my pieces of paper because I normally have it on my iPad. We're going to sing our next song, but just before I do that, so that the young people can choose to leave when, whenever they're ready, let's just say a prayer for the young people as well as they go to young church. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you that you call us of all generations to come and to serve you. And that no matter our age, we can be your disciple. We pray that you bless young church as they go to their meeting and that they will be inspired by your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn is Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. going to have our two readings and then the choir is going to come and minister to us and it's the what was it called again bound for jubilee they're going to sing when the choir comes up the first reading is from proverbs 8 it's entitled wisdom's call does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? 
At the highest point along the way, where the paths meet, she takes her stand, beside the gate leading into the city. At the entrance, she cries aloud, to you, O people, I call out, I raise my voice to all mankind. And then a bit later on in Proverbs 8, from verse 22 onwards, the Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. I was formed long, long ages ago at the very beginning when the world came to be. When there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water. Before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust of the earth. I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizons on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so that waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. And then from the New Testament, John chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will come, will receive from me what he will make known to you. Thanks be to God for these words.
I think my, I think my colleagues are being crafty that I've had whilst I've been here, because I'm sure that when Peter was here and when he got to Trinity Sunday, he was away, which meant I got it, and and Alex is away, so I've got Trinity Sunday again. Uh, it's one of those services, one of those Sundays. You think, oh, Trinity Sunday. What do I say on Trinity Sunday? Well, we'll see. Maybe some things that I've said before and some of the images you'll have seen before. We say that it's a mystery and sort of leave it there. Remember, ministry is something that you cannot understand. Sorry, remember, mystery isn't something you cannot understand. It's something that you endlessly understand. There is no point at which you can say, I've got it. Always and forever, mystery gets you. The mystery of the Trinity, the mystery of God gets you. We don't get him. There are many ways, different ways to explain the Trinity when we come to that point. And I'm just going to highlight a a couple now. Uh, three, I think it is, that I'm going to do. So if I have the first slide, please. There we go, here's a mystery. There we go. Now, these have been used many times before, and what I'm not wanting to do is to try and explain what the Trinity is. But sometimes we try to take the things that are around us, the things of earth, and use them to explain the Trinity. And I'm not too sure whether or not they work for us properly. So we try things like a four-leaf clover. And we say, well, sorry, three-leaf clover, I can't count. Three-leaf clover. And uh, we try to use that, but it doesn't really quite work uh, for me to say that that's like the Trinity. Or the next one. We might use an egg and use an egg as our image of explaining the Trinity, and you'll have heard those. But there's still parts within that illustration that don't quite work for me in understanding that mystery of the Holy Trinity. And then the third one. And then the, the most commonly used is water. And in some ways, at this point, we're starting to get somewhere near to understanding the, the mystery of the Trinity, that water can be both ice, both water and steam. It's all water. It's all the same thing, but in three different parts. One of the things that we uh, have within the church, and one of the things I love, is art. And uh, a person who I read quite often, his books, Richard Raw, uh, says within one of his books, is all art is sacred. All art is sacred that's, a, that's an interesting statement to make and I'm, I'm still working and processing that one through for myself but he says all art is sacred because in, within it the artist has put so much of themselves into that piece of work and often so much of God within to it uh, and he says sometimes though within the church we, we take our art and we make it a little bit too twee on the other hand as well rather than putting the sacred into the art we have another image, and this is an image that I want us to sort of stay with throughout the service. This is a, an icon. Icons are beautiful things, in my opinion. I love a religious icon, uh, and I find, find great spirituality and great depth within the images. This one is probably one of the most famous ones that we have. And for people who like icons, it's often called the icon of icons. It's Rublev's icon of the Holy Trinity. And icons are important in my mind within the, the, our religious understanding and our religious uh, experience. Because an iconographer doesn't just paint something. They actually have to go through many, many years of training and understanding and to be able to explain why they do certain things and are painted in certain ways and what the spiritual element is within that and in that preparation. It has to be 
um, painted on a particular piece of wood. They have to use particular uh, glazes and different things and golds and all sorts to, re to, to reflect what they're trying to say through the image. And this, as I say, is one of the most famous, uh, the Trinity from Rublev. In Rublev's icon, there are three primary colors which illustrate the facets of the Holy One. It's contained within there. Firstly, Rublev considered gold the color of the Father, and that's why we have gold, offering perfection, fullness, wholeness. The ultimate source is found in that gold. He considered the blue to be for the human, both sea and sky, mirroring one another, and therefore God in Christ taking on the world, taking on humanity. So Rublev's picture of the Christ is blue, displaying, you can see, holding two fingers to tell us that he has put spirit and matter together. Divinity and humanity coming together, found in him. God in humanity. God who is there for us. And then the final colour is the colour green. And this is to represent the spirit. Hildegard, who was an abbess, said a quality of the divine aliveness is found in that colour. In the blossom and the bloom and the endless shades of green, we find divinity. But today, I'm not wanting to talk about doctrine and the doctrine of the Trinity. Although it's interesting to think about it and to work it through, but it is one of those mysteries that we have within the church when we start to talk about the idea of Trinity. Just to put it in some perspective, for 300 years um, after Christ's de death was the first time the church actually mentions it in the context of Trinity. We read in the Bible and we understand the images of Trinity within the Bible, but it actually took 300 years for the church to decide what it meant by Trinity. But what I'd like us to think about this morning is, yes, we have the Trinity. We have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is what we believe, and it's what makes us a church. But I'd like us to think about how we live as Trinitarian people. How do we live Trinitarian lives? Because each one of us, we live, move, and have our being in the Holy Trinity. We could not be in this church, be Christians, without the Holy Trinity. I found over the years that my prayer life and my prayer time has changed, and I'm sure yours has from time to time as well. And I find myself much more, certainly within my own private prayers, moving to much more praying in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we look at our entry into the church, and that entry being at baptism, we are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In healing, some traditions will bring out oil and anoint people with oil, and in doing that for healing, we'll pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those words that sometimes within our worship trip off our tongues so easily are such an important part of who we are because everything we do, we do in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Even in other areas of our lives, sometimes as a minister, you might get asked to bless people. We bless in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I've known ministers who've been asked to bless pets. I'm not sure where I'd go on that one, but you know, some people get asked. Blessing of homes, blessing of cars, 
These are all things that I've come across that people have been asked to have blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And even then, at the end, right at the end of our lives, in our funerals, we are brought to God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are a Trinitarian people. From the beginning to end and everything in between, of all of creation, birth and life and death, all are constituted, all are sustained, all are filled by the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So to see this day, this holy day, as something that's just nothing more than a concept of numbers that equal three that, that one equals three and three equals one. It's like saying a wedding anniversary is simply a remembrance and celebration of the concept of love. We know a wedding anniversary is a celebration of love, not a concept of love. Concepts of love or the Holy Spirit rarely, if ever, sustain or transform our lives. Instead, our lives are sustained and transformed by relationships and experiences. Thinking to ourselves, well, I think I know what the Trinity is, will not sustain us. It is that as Trinitarian people, we experience the Holy Trinity every day. How would you describe to someone you love, about somebody you love, whether that love is a platonic or a romantic relationship? What if you were to write down and make a list? It would probably start very well, but it wouldn't take too long for it to become a little bit superficial. Well, you're a good cook. You do a good job. You start saying sort of nice things. But it wouldn't really explain the depths of love. Words don't always express exactly how we feel and it can be that we struggle to get that message out and across to people. How would you describe, capture the essence, the mystery of love shared and received? We begin to talk about that love being within our whole being. And it's just what makes us who we are. When we think about the Trinity, we're talking about a love that is connected and so intertwined that we find it almost impossible to describe. A love that is giving of itself so completely that it's found in the other. Love that can't be talked about. Love that can only be experienced. Likewise, try to define the Trinity and you end up with not very good maths. Now, I know that when I was at school, I didn't get very good maths results at all. In fact, I'm one of the few people who nearly came close to failing it at CSC level, which really takes some doing. For those of you, for those of you who don't know what CSC level is, um, you know, it was, you, you weren't anywhere near O level not even putting you there. So if you nearly failed CSE, you weren't good. So maths is not my subject, never has been. But even I know that if you take one plus one plus one, it doesn't equal one. But we try to define it in that way. That we always leave it with this wanting more, wanting more to understand. Sometimes we use that illustration of the egg. God in three persons, the shell, the, the, the white, and the, the yolk. But said even that, as an illustration, starts to break down and not quite work. We start to think about the three musketeers, and that doesn't quite work as well, because we always think, well, there were actually four of them, but we might come back to the fourth. But sometimes, at best, we're left a little bit confused. How can the words ever describe or capture the beauty, the mystery of three lives shared, given, and received? 
we can only explain that by how it has an effect on our lives. How that those three lives in one transform us. How do you talk about three persons giving themselves to each other so completely that they live within one another? Not losing themselves, but finding their true completeness in one another. That's where I start to possibly get a grasp on the Holy Spirit. That they are so involved in one another, three in one, that they cannot exist without the other. Sometimes there are things that can't really be explained. And to be honest, as I keep on trying, the Trinity is one of those. Because I believe it only can be experienced. So how do we experience the Trinity? In the Gospel reading, Jesus explains the relationship he has is with the Father and the Spirit. He doesn't say what they are. But he speaks of the relationship that he has with them. Everything that they have is shared and given. All the heart Father has has been given to the Spirit. All that Jesus has is given to the... Sorry, all the Father has is given to Jesus. All that Jesus has is given to the Spirit. And all the Spirit has is given to you and to me. And for me, this is one of the most important parts of the Trinity is that we can enter into and receive that love, that life-giving love, and know it for ourselves. That the Trinity is not something that is distant and far away. It is that the Holy Trinity is here with us now. All that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit has been, give, has been given and made available to each one of us. Nothing is withheld. Nothing is secret. Can we go back to Rublev's icon, please? As we look at this image of the icon, I think I know I've used this before, and I may well another time use this again, because as I say, I think it's such an important image. It shows us of the relationship that is found within the Trinity. Look as they gaze from one another and the way that they look to one another. Look at the way there is a circle uh, within the, the image there and, and how they are all one. The icon, though, is really important because the icon invites a fourth person of the Trinity. Now, I know my maths is bad, but bear with me on this. The fourth person of the Trinity. Rublev invites us to consider this. What is the fourth person of the Trinity? Now art historians over the years when looking at this have noticed a small square at the front uh, between the legs of the front two images. You can have the next one. Just there, that small square. And it suggested that right at the beginning when Rublev made this icon, that he put a mirror there. Now that would have been a very strange thing to happen within an icon. Nobody has ever heard of an icon like this having a mirror within it as well. But it suggested that Rublev, in having that mirror there, allowed us to look into the Trinity and to be part of of the Trinity, that the Trinity was inviting us in. Can I go back to the bigger image of that? Thank you. But even without the mirror that we don't have today, we see that at the foot of the image, there is an opening. And in that opening, God is inviting us to come and sit within the Trinity, to take our place, not as God, but as a disciple, friend, follower, a lover of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, wanting to sit and to listen to what they have to say, wanting to be there in their presence, wanting to be 
Trinity people. For many years, my image of God when I was growing up was of a big God sat on a big throne, usually with a rather big stick. For me, that became something that was disabling in my spiritual life because I couldn't cope with the idea of God in that way. But yet I still chose to follow God. But now, within this image, within Rublev's icon, I don't see a God on a big throne. I don't see a God with a big stick. I see a God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who's saying to me, come in, to this relationship. Come in because I love you. Come in because I've given my life for you. Come in because my spirit empowers you. We are not outsiders. We are not mere spectators. But we are part of this divine dance that is taking place. Richard Rohr wrote a book, Father Richard Rowe, called The Divine Dance. And it's his description of the Holy Trinity, that it is a divine dance. And that Christ invites us to come in. God in Christ, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, invites us to come in and to join in that divine dance. Now, if you know me, and uh, you'll know that I do not dance, not at all. My wife, I think, has had about three dances with me in all our married life. But if the divine dance invites me in, then I'm willing to dance. This dance is of God's love and life for each one of us. It's not abstract. It's not unreal. We know it's real because he has invited us in. The Trinitarian life is embodied and revealed through us. Wherever we are, whoever we are, within whatever situation we are, there we will find God's dance floor. And he invites us to come and dance with him. We dance with God in our intimate relationships. We dance with God in our friendships. We dance in God in, with God in places of reconciliation, in places of healing. We dance with God at school. We dance with God in our workplace. We dance with God at the food bank. We dance with God in our silence and our solitude, in our recreation, in our joys, and in our sorrows, in our concerns and our thanksgivings. God invites us to come into this dance to be part of a Trinitarian people. Not an abstract concept, but a life-giving relationship available to all. And in every one of those places, we find there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he's saying to each one of us and to everybody in our world, may I have this dance. Amen. We're going to sing our hymn. It's Majesty, Worship His Majesty.
Let's pray together. Father God, your purpose is for all, for all that you have made, and that you are Lord of heaven and earth. You are the creator of humankind, ruler over history. You are always at work, always in our, involved in our lives, calling, guiding, speaking, and responding. Everyone important to you, no matter who they are, each having a place in your purpose. So then we pray for all in our world who feel they are drifting. All who search for meaning to their lives, a sense of direction, a goal to strive for. May they find in Jesus Christ the way, the truth, and the life. In faith, we lift them before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Son of God, your love is for all. For you lived and died for others, reaching out to both rich and poor, Jew and Gentile, righteous and unrighteous. Nobody outside your care, no one beyond your grace, you gave your all, enduring death on the cross, so that everyone willing to receive you may share in the joy of your kingdom. So we pray for all in our world today who long for love. Those who are yearning for meaningful relationships. Those whose once precious relationships have ended in tears. For those who feel abandoned, for children who have been orphaned, and those who cannot have relationships and friendships, those cut off by family and friends, those who face the trauma of bereavement, may they discover in you a love that will never let them go. In faith, we lift them before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of God, your peace is for all. For you are at work in every heart, seen or unseen, recognized or unrecognized. Striving to break down the barriers which keep us from one another, from ourselves, from you. We pray then for all in our world who are hungry for peace. All who are tormented by fear, torn by doubt, troubled by anxieties, tortured by guilt. Families and communities separated by feuds and nations ravaged by war. May they find through you peace in body, mind and spirit and in faith we lift them before you Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Almighty God Father, Son and Holy Spirit we bring you our world thankful that it is also your world precious to you and shaped ultimately by your will remake redeem Renew it through your sovereign power. May all people everywhere come to know your purpose, experience your love, and receive your peace. And may each rejoice in the new life you, you so yearn to give. In faith we live that them and ourselves before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For 
the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And can we now receive the offering? Father, we praise you and thank you for all the wonderful gifts that you have given to us. In gratitude, we pray that you would take these, our gifts, given in a variety of different ways, and take our lives and use them to your glory. Amen. I realised I missed a hymn. So can we go to what would have been the second hymn, Meet God? Can we go to that one? We'll not have the last hymn that we're going to have. I won't tell you what it was, so you might be disappointed. Um, others uh, will know. But yeah, this is um, our hymn. This is the Trinity hymn, uh, Meet God. I'm sorry, I haven't got all of my paperwork here. Who, who wrote it? Do you know the our members? Who? Alan Swallow who wrote this, and it's our Trinity hymn, and it's called Meet God. share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Sorry, I forgot to announce coffee is being served as usual. <laughs> 